is the same that heals diseases, is the same that rescues from destruction, is the same that gives you loving kindness, is the same that satisfies your mouth. One gospel. Am I communicating at all tonight? I don't know about you, but my choice is to carry all of them. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm carrying the holiness and carrying the, 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 the health and carrying the prosperity. I, I'm, 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 I, I'm carrying every one of them. Somebody say amen. Because in Bible days, the holiest men was, were also the richest men. Job was very upright. And yet nobody could see his break light in wealth in his generation. And that is what, and that is the generation of people God is raising right now. You are among them, say a loud amen. amen. So what are the things that are packaged inside redemption? One, salvation from sin. Very obvious. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21, he said, for he has made him to be seen for us who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He made us, made him to be seen. That is, he took our sins. Isaiah chapter 53 and in verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Why he was beaten is because of the sins that we had. So that we can be cleansed. That is called holiness or sanctification. Rescue, salvation from sin. Package number one. Number two, rescue from sickness. It is called healing gospel. Which as it is so called. But the gospel is just one. Isaiah chapter 53 and in verse 5. The Bible said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. The same sacrifice that took care of sin, took care of sickness. Matthew chapter 8 verse 17, he said to us that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Somebody say amen. Provision number three, rescue from causes and spells. It, that is called deliverance. Rescue from all forms of evil work. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, as it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. He rescued us from the curses. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. The Bible said, He delivered us. It's called deliverance. Delivered. Delivered us from the power of darkness. That is on the cross. And translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's the basis for deliverance. So, it is salvation from sin. It is rescue from sickness, then rescue from curses and spells, spells. Then rescue from scarcity and poverty. It is part of it. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That you, through his poverty, might be rich on the cross of Calvary, the stripped in naked. Oh yeah, this is in, in the Bible. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12, worthy is the lamb. Oh, Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. Saying, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor. Glory and blessing. Part of why he was killed was to receive riches. It is in the Bible. Whether the religious mind wants to take it or not, that is the business of such minds. It's scriptural. For the sake of making his people rich, he became poor according to scripture. Some people say it is spiritual riches. It is spiritualness. It's both spiritual and physical. 
Number five, rescue from death, premature death. In John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, The thief come to kill, to steal, to destroy, but I am come that you may have life and have it in excess. Before I came, the devil was wasting people's lives anyhow. First John chapter 3, verse 8, For this purpose the Son of Man was made manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That work including premature death. That work included premature death. And Hebrews chapter 2 and in verse 9, he said, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death. He, re he was reduced in status for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. That is, he should die young for the sake of every man. That is, the death that should take you before you finish your time on earth. He tasted it so that you don't taste it. So that you will finish your tenure on the earth. What a wonderful savior. That is part of the package. Number, number six. I may not exhaust everything. Number six is rescue from emotional crisis. Emotional and mental crisis. Redemption covers the healing of the mind. In Isaiah chapter 53 and in verse 5, he said, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Whatever puts our peace under pressure came on him so that our minds can be at peace. Matthew 11, 28, 29, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me for I'm meek and lowly not, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Peace. You are not meant to be an emotional baggage. Suffering from anxiety neurosis. Afraid of shaking leaves. You are meant to have a mind that is intact. You are not meant to be a victim of the pressures of this life. So unstable like... I mean you are afraid of everything. No. You are not meant to have a mind that is unstable. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. There are many, many, many more. But I'll stop here tonight. I showed you this package to show you that supernatural supply finances Escape from scarcity and shortage. Abundance and means is inside the package of redemption. That you can be holy and be healed and be delivered and be wealthy and be lively and live long and be happy all together. You can enjoy life in a climate of cleanness, all together. Someone say amen. But our concern tonight was the supernatural supply. How do you connect the abundance of God? The package is already there, but how do you connect it? Number one, maintain the God first heart. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things people are dying to get will be added to you. Maintain such a heart that no amount of money will take your heart from God. No amount. No amount of money takes your heart from God. No amount of resources take the place of God in your life. No amount of wealth can tamper with your worship. Lord, the money that will take me to hell may never enter my hand. You refuse the prosperity of a fool. Proverbs 1.32, the prosperity of fools destroys them. 
For the turning of away of the simple shall slay them. And the prosperity of fools. Who is a fool? A fool is the one who says there is no God. He behaves like God doesn't exist. He behaves like money is everything. You maintain that God first heart. Lord, I will never worship man-made God. I will never worship money. No matter how rich I become, I can still be an usher. I can still be a sanctuary cleaner. I can still evangelize on the street. When your heart is at such a level, God will never be afraid to put resources in your hands by his message. There is no amount of money that enters these hands now that can change my mind. None. I haven't seen. One billion dollars, it means nothing. God needs to bring us to a point where he has dealt with you. So there, you are literally allergic to material things. Some time ago, an officer in public service brought a check from his organization to support the construction of the project. And I looked at him and I said, it was dropped in my absence in check form with a letter. This is to support the project. And we wrote back, we don't need that support. This is church project does not require one dime of government money. Divert it. Use it for your organization. When you are going to account for it, will you say that, that in your budget, you say that uh, you did so and so many zeros to, to, to church for development? So you put our name in, government, in, in, in your organizational book as one of those who took money from there. That devil is a bastard. I went to a state some time ago. The chief executive of that place sent, I think, his PA or aid or something to bring something to us in the hotel where we we're staying. In many zeros. This is his contribution to the crusade. I say, it's not needed. Take it back to him. The man said, How can I do it? How will we do? It's out of respect. It's a normal thing. I say, It's not normal here. Support crusade like how? We don't, that support is not needed. That is, you, you can see money. I talked to the person who took back the money today. He reminded me today. He was telling somebody about it. He said he has never seen such a thing before. He took it back. It came cash. He took it back cash. I told the man, I said, with, with all due respect, we came for this program, this crusade, we came with money. And we don't need one dime. We respect you and we have prayed for you. You know what the man told him? He said, I haven't seen this kind of thing before. He said, any time the man is in town, I will be at the crusade. Any meeting. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? <laughs> so you can, you can come to the point where you see money and you look away. You can come and the money will begin to respect you. You can come to the point where it doesn't mean nothing to you. You see it, you pass. Many people have been begging me, can you send me your account number? I want to pay Facebook, I want to pay this. Some of them say, I'm not sure of who you are. Do I know who you are? <laughs> I, just, I just give you my account. Supposing you stole the money and they want to trace it to that account. You, you are looking for which account to take it to. So <laughs> they can... Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Is somebody getting something here tonight? I see people that God is about to make very, very, very wealthy. And if you are among them, you shout the loudest, amen. amen. Maintain the God first heart. Number two, honor God with your substance. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 to 10. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 to 10. He said, Honor the Lord with, with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. 
So shall your bands be filled with plenty. And your presses shall burst out with new wine. Honor God with your substance. Honor God with the substantial, not the superficial. Substance means that which is heavy. If you want to understand substance, you read Job chapter 1 verse, verse 1 to 3. When the Bible defined Job and then defined his substance from verse 2. His substance and he has seven daughters and then verse 3. He said, and his substance was 7,000 sheep. He said, honor God with your substance. That which makes you thick. I said that this January sacrifice will be taken against the year. Many people have not seen one single result out of sacrifice because they give to God leftovers. Substance. Watch what, if it doesn't mean anything to you, it won't mean nothing to God. When you come to the point where your givings don't mean nothing to you, it can't mean anything to God. Substance. Number three, Possess kingdom impact vision. Kingdom impact vision. Think beyond survival. I'm looking for a car. I'm looking for a house. Think beyond that. Think beyond personal consumption. Think of souls to save. Missionaries to send an assignment. Churches to be built. Crusades to be held. Think, because vision pulls provision. Think beyond just ordinary survival. Think large kingdom visions. What will I do if I have a billion naira for, for the sake of rescuing souls from hell to heaven? I heard the story well of an evangelist that had someone release a million dollars per crusade. A Christian person. Everywhere you want to go, one million dollars is for That's nationwide meetings. The souls that are saved on such crusade in millions don't only enter the account of the evangelist. It enters the account of that man. Also in heaven. Big vision. And when God sees your mind is big for the kingdom, then he directs resources that are big in your hands. Some people say, if I have it, I'll do it. God knows if you have it, you won't do it. That's why it hasn't come. Because he's watching your behavior where you are. A person that cannot give one naira out of two naira to God will never be able to give 1,000 out of 2,000. Can't be able to give 10,000 out of 20,000. So God is watching. He's just watching our behavior of today to determine our tomorrow. Possess kingdom impact vision. Psalm 132 verse 1 to 5. We saw how David said he will not sleep until he builds God a house. Psalm 132 verse 1 to 5. And then 1 Chronicles 29 verse 1 to 3. When he began to enumerate his substance. Kingdom impact vision. Number four. Exist. Determined to exist as a blessing. A blessing to your world. A blessing to the poor and the needy. A blessing to the orphan. A blessing to the less privileged. Just a you are just you are just you are just an ocean, a dam looking for where to flow. God knows that if he directs massive money into your hands, the poor has their share inside. They have their share inside. The school fees of, that, of those orphan children are inside what he wants to send your way. So it will flow. Finally, is this that is blessing? Genesis chapter 2 verse 2 to 3. Job chapter 29 verse 11 to 17. Genesis 12, 2 to 3. Job 29, 11 to 17. And finally, exist in faithfulness. Faithfulness means consistency in doing the right thing. Consistency in the right action. 
consistency in the right direction exists in faithfulness. For the faithful man shall abound with the blessing. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 28. Exist in faithfulness. A faithful man shall abound with the blessing. Exist in faithfulness. In consistently doing the right thing. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. He said, And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we, if we faint not. Don't be tired. Don't be tired of maintaining a God first heart. Don't be tired of honoring God with your substance. At times when the devil sees that your life is about to change, he will make it look like what you are doing is not producing any result. It's just a slight test. Be consistent, be constant in maintaining large vision for the kingdom. Be constant in being a blessing to your generation. Just be constant. Just keep on. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 9, he said, don't be tired of doing good. Let us not be weary in well-doing. He said, for in due season, at the appropriate time, you will see the harvest if you refuse to get tired. It's a new day. This message is very important because prayer for money is a waste of time when the principles are not in place. Am I communicating? Prayer for finance, finances is a waste of time where the principles are not in place. Other things that we might talk about, we'll talk about them in financial management issues when the month for it appears. But for tonight, foundation, foundation for God to open up the heavens. Stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. If that clap is for me, if that is too much. If it is for God, that is too small. So give it to him now louder, 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 bigger.